Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, this is a public service announcement. A lot of people have been asking me how I make my ginger beer and fruit punch with a global lockdown. People are getting thirsty, so here you go ladies and gentlemen. The first thing you're going to need is a 25 litre water container. Secondly, you need a big pot, cast iron porky pot or a sort of big pot you'd, you'd make soup in. Thirdly, you're going to need about three kilograms of sugar. And fourthly, you're going to need whatever type of fruit you want to put in there. If you want a straight ginger beer, you're just going to need a nice two big handfuls of ginger. If you want to make a fruit punch, you're going to need all your, all your fruit. For me, I normally put a bit of, a bit of, bit of ginger in there to boof it up a bit. And then I'll put a bag or two apples in, normally a pineapple. Strawberries are nice because it gives it that nice red color. You can put grapes, really whatever fruit you want to put in there, you can bang in there, kiwi fruit, it, it all works. Because once it's fermenting, it just goes in the, in the tumble dryer. And that's where the, the love and action happens. So basically you chop up all your fruit, put it in a big pot and warm it up. You d warm it up. You do not want to boil this. You want to take it to before it's boiling. So it's nice and warm, but you're not going to burn your finger when you put it in there. Once you get it to that sort of temperature, throw in two to three kilograms of sugar, depending how much flavor you want. And then from there you carry on, let it, let it, let it idle away at, for about 10 minutes. Not boiling, but a nice, a nice heat. Almost after you've had your barbecue or your braai, then put the poiki on when the coals are a little less feared. And then once all the sugar is d dissolved, then you just let the poiki or the pot sit for half an hour, let it cool down, and then you add two bags of yeast from your local shop, brew, carry on stirring, and then stir some more. And then once it's all nice and stirred together, you put the contents into your 25 liter water container. It'll, it'll come up to about there and you'll add a, probably another 15 liters in. Take it to about 18 liters. So you've got a, about five, at least minimum of five, but more like seven liters of, of fresh air at the top and the contents of your fruit and the, the water you put in. Close it up. Bearing in mind, you're going to need to burp it about five times a day because you're going to get a lot of pressure building up as everything ferments in there. You can be clever and and uh, and have a have a little contraption at the top that lets gas out slowly, or you can be like Andre who who put a who put a pipe from the one into water on the other side into a into a bottle of water. So as the gas is released, it comes through the little pipe it looks like garden hose and boom into the other side if you want to be clever you can do it that way if you want to do it the old manual way you just open your the lid five times a day at least in the first three days that thing's going to be crackling away a lot of power going on there so once it gets past that initial fermentation stage after four to five days then everything starts slowing down if you want super strength, super flavor, carry on adding some about 250 grams of sugar with a liter or two of, of, of water just to top it up. And that extra bit of sugar will carry on activating the yeast. And after about a week or two, you can taste it. And if it tastes iry it, put it through a sieve, put it through a strainer into a two liter bottle, a five liter bottle, whatever you want and store it in a cold place. You want to ferment in a, in a warm place with no direct sun, but nice and warm. If it's, if it's too cold, last winter, things weren't even fermenting at all. So, that's basically it, folks. Pretty simple, it's very durable. Get out there, enjoy it, and we'll catch you next time on Africa Sideways.